morning. First Kings chapter 8 records King Solomon's great prayer at the, the dedication of the newly built temple in the middle of the 10th century B.C. And in verses 46 through 45, 46 through 51 of that chapter, he prays on behalf of the people. He says, if they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them and give them to an enemy, so that they're carried away captive to the land of the enemy, far off or near, yet if they turn their heart in the land to which, you've, to which you have, they have been carried captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captors, saying, we have sinned and have acted perversely and wickedly. If they repent with all their mind and with all their heart in the land of their enemies who carried them captive and pray to you toward their land which you gave their fathers, the city that you have chosen and the house that I have built for your name, then hear in heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their plea and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions that they've committed against you and grant them compassion in the sight of those who've carried them captive that they may have compassion on them for they are your people and your heritage which you brought out of Egypt from the midst of the iron furnace. Now centuries later, Daniel echoes this prayer in Daniel chapter 9 verses 3 through 19 as he was fasting in sackcloth and ashes, which are emblems of repentance, right near the end of the period of Babylonian captivity. And Daniel says in Daniel chapter 9, verses 4 to 6, I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and rules. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Soon after his prayer, Cyrus issued his decree that permitted the Jews to return to Jerusalem. You see throughout the Bible that there is no blessing from God for a people who live in rebellion to him. For those who rationalize away or justify their sin, the way forward with God is always naked honesty and repentance of sin, seeking his mercy in humility and confession. This is true individually. Thus James, for example, says in James chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, draw near, O God, and to, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloominess. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. It is true individually, but it's also true corporately. Just look at what the Lord Jesus says to the churches, to the congregations in Revelation. You see, we are a community of faith, not isolated individuals. However difficult that is for us to grasp in individualistic Western culture, we are a community of people. Let's go to our Father in prayer. God, your holiness is absolute. We know that in you there is no darkness at all. You are atomic white. And we cannot live in sin and rebellion and expect fellowship with you or blessings from you. You are worthy of the obedience and absolute devotion of all of creation. 
We ask this morning, dear Lord, that you convict us of our sin. Drive it home to our hearts, as you did with David when you sent Nathan to him. Help us to feel its true horror that we might be a broken people. Father, we need your forgiveness for how we've treated our marriage covenants. Our husbands have not loved their wives as Christ loves the church. And our wives have not loved, respected, and accepted the leadership of their husbands. We've allowed these sins to fester and have refused to repent of them, leaving in their wake broken relationships and even divorces, which you hate. These things are denials of your power to live a new life. They produce heartache in families and discourage both saints and seekers. Forgive us, dear God. We have opened our homes night after night to mockery of your holy name and your perfect will as we've consumed the moral sewage that Hollywood spews out. We've ceased to be offended by the things that offend you, and we've let the world define for us what is right and what is wrong. Forgive us, dear God. We've remained silent or muted as tens of millions of unborn children have been slaughtered, leaving it to others to be your prophetic voice and to be your hands and feet in seeking protection and justice for these little ones whom you've given life. And we've even used our rights as citizens to put in office people who promote the killing of children and who in other ways promote immorality. Forgive us, dear God. We've lived in private lives that deny your lordship, lying, getting intoxicated with alcohol or drugs, using obscene and vulgar speech, viewing pornography and even engaging in sexual immorality. And yet we gather to worship you as though our rebellion is of no concern, acting as though our sin is concealed from you. Forgive us, dear God. We've allowed discouragement to divert us from your work of telling others about your tremendous love for them in Jesus Christ. We've turned inward and have become comfortable with our lack of evangelism. And to our shame, we've sometimes even been embarrassed by your glorious gospel. Forgive us, dear Lord. We've treated the church like a worldly social club, like a group with which we interact for what we can get rather than for what we can give. And we've too often treated one another in ways we would not want to be treated. Forgive us, dear God. Father, we know and we rejoice in the truth that you are a God who delights to show mercy. And we know, dear God, that you do great things through people of great failure. By the blood of Jesus, we ask you to heal us, please, Lord. And use us to your glory, despite how we have sinned. Strengthen us and continue to transform us by your spirit. In Jesus' holy name, amen.